Hi my dear students today i am thinking let's make video on organic chemistry so in this video we are going to discuss about most important topic of the organic chemistry and that is sn1 and sn2 reaction so let's go to the my laptop screen and learn what is sn1 and sn2 reaction so before going to understand sn1 and sn2 reaction Let's understand the type of organic reactions. Organic reactions are divided into, into the four parts. That is a substitution reaction, addition reaction, elimination re reaction, and rearrangement reaction. And the substitution reaction are further divided into the two part SN1 and SN2 reaction. As we know that our main topic is SN1 and SN2 reaction. So let's understand what is SN1 and SN2 reaction. So the full form of SN1, okay? So S stand for substitution, N stand for nucleophilic, and one for the what? Unimolecular reaction. So uni means one, and same like SN2, substitution nucleophilic by molecular reaction. Now let's understand nucleophile. So nucleophile word is made from the two words nucleus plus philic that means nucleophile. As we know that any nucleus having which charge positive charge and philic means what to love. So this nucleophile is what nucleus lover that means it loves what positive charge. So we can say that nucleophile is what nucleus lover it loves the positive charge so of course it's having the opposite charge that means nucleophiles are what electron rich species and whenever there is any reaction of nucleophiles they are attack on the part of the substrate of a molecule which are what electron deficient because we know that nucleophiles loves what positive charge now i am going to show you the list of nucleophiles over here kindly see it among these all nucleophiles, I want to highlight two specific nucleophiles that's a cyanide and this is what nitrites. So why these two are specific? These two are called as a embedded nucleophiles. Embedded nucleophiles means they possess two nucleophilic centers. In case of cyanides, this carbon and this nitrogen both are what nucleophilic centers. And in the case of nitrites, this O and this nitrogen both are what nucleophilic centers. Now let's understand the definition of nucleophilic substitution reaction. So the reaction in which nucleophile replace already existed nucleophile in a molecule is called nucleophilic substitution reaction. As an example, here we can see that this is the molecule in which already there is a present of nucleophile. This coming or attacking a nucleophile is going to replace this nucleophile like this way okay so this reaction is what example of nucleophilic substitution reaction so first we are going to understand sn2 reaction and then we will going to understand sn1 reaction so in the case of sn2 reaction the reaction of hydroxide ion with a chloromethane gives the product as a methanol this reaction is considered as a sn2 reaction because this reaction follows the second order kinetics and it's depend on the rate of concentration of both reactant. Let's understand the mechanism of this reaction. This hydroxide ion is going to attack on the chloromethane, okay? And it will form the pentavalent structure, okay? So in this pentavalent structure, this is called what transition state. This bond is going to form and this bond is going to break, okay? And after this, we are getting this product as a what? Methanol and this chloride ion is going to remove okay so here these two bonds are going to form in the pentavalent state and these two bonds are going to break and this is called as a what transition state this transition state is unstable and cannot be isolated this sn2 reaction is carried out by inversion of configuration now let's understand what is the inversion of configuration now as we know that this was our starting material nucleophile is going to attack from this left side okay so when it is going to attack from the left side these three uh, hydrogens are now on the left side of this carbon so they are going to invert it and they will move to the what right side so it is just like inversion of umbrella 
okay so that is called inversion of configuration now see this this is our starting material and this is the product okay so these hydrogens these three hydrogens are on which side left side of the carbon but in this case they are going to invert it and they are on the what right side of carbon so this is what inversion of configuration and configuration means what it is a spatial arrangement of the functional group around the carbon is called configuration now let's understand the effect of bulky substituents on or near the carbon atoms so in the first case this is what methyl chloride okay so our nucleophile is going to attack from this left side so it is going to interact with only this three hydrogen okay so it is very less hindered so this attack is a more favorable now in this case so now we can see this this is the ethyl chloride this is the 3d structure and if we imagine that this nucleophile is going to attack from uh, this side okay so this is the structure nucleophile is going to attack from this side so that nucleophile is going to what some hindrance or some resistance by this group okay so this additional group is going to affect on incoming nucleophile so it is quite difficult in comparison of what methyl chloride this is the example of isopropyl chloride okay so now in this case as you can see this is the 3d structure okay it is very easy to understand this is the side so nucleophile is going to attack by this side okay so in this case it is facing resistance from this one and two bulky group so it is more difficult in the comparison of what ethyl chloride okay so i can show you okay these two bulky groups are there which are going to what effect on nucleophile and it uh, it will what doing more hindrance this is what tertiary butyl okay so in this case as we put over here these three ca3 bulky groups are there which will gives more hindrance to the incoming nucleophile so it is very difficult for to uh, to come here for the what nucleophile so this is the least reactive okay as in front you can see this one two and three nucleophiles are there okay so there is a very bulky groups over here so nucleophile cannot come easily to this carbon okay so we can summarize that in the sn2 reaction primary halides are more reactive than the secondary halide than the tertiary halide this is the uh, reactivity order is given that methyl chloride is a uh, most reactive it is a 30 time reactivity than the what ethyl chloride than the isopropyl than the tertiary butyl okay here the proportion is given how much times it is a reactive so here is only three hydrogen here one ca3 here two ca3 methyl groups are there and here three methyl groups are there so here there is a more steric hindrance and the reaction is a least feasible in the case of tertiary halides now let's understand the sn1 reaction this sn1 reaction are carried out in what protic solvent okay just like a water alcohol and acetic acid the reaction of 2 bromo 2 methyl propane with the hydroxide ion gives the product as a 2 methyl propane 2 ol this reaction follows the first order kinetics and the rate of reaction depends only on the concentration of one reactant and that is a tertiary butyl bromide now let's understand the mechanism of sn1 reaction so in the step 1 what happened this carbon and bromine bond is going to break and this reaction is a slow step okay and there is a formation of carbocation in the step 2 this carbocation is over here is going to attack by what this hydroxide ion and the product is going to form this step is very fast step so as we have already discussed that step 1 is a slow step okay and the cbr carbon bromine bond breaking the energy is obtained through the what solvation of halide ions in the proton of a protic solvent so it is does not depending on the concentration of hydroxide ion okay so the rate of this reaction it is depending on what rate determining step and that is the step 
and there is a only and only depending on the what concentration of our substrate molecule okay in the step 2 there is a what carbocation is form more stable the carbocation so more it is going to form the what product so that reaction will be faster so in the case of tertiary alkyl halide it is go the sn1 reaction very fast because it is a highly stable so we can sum up as a reactivity order in the case of sn2 reaction ch3x is most favorable than the primary than the secondary than the tertiary but this order is going to inverted in the case of what sn1 reaction tertiary carbocation is more stable and it will form more fastly product in the case of sn1 reaction i hope you understand the sn1 and sn2 reaction and if you have any doubt you can ask in the comment section so thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video so please don't forget to like this video share this video and subscribe this channel thank you so much thank you for your support